Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks written by Al Lewis. Well, the baseball season is rapidly getting underway and Our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School is full of enthusiasm for our national pastime. Yes, I am enthusiastic about the national pastime. Largely, I must admit, because of the enthusiasm for the game felt by one Philip Boynton, my national pastime. <laughs> Last Thursday morning at breakfast, my landlady asked me, how come? How come this sudden interest in baseball, Connie? Seems to me you never cared about the game very much. Oh, you're wrong, Mrs. Davis. I always had a deep-rooted love for the game. It just took someone to bring it out. Mr. Boynton. It wasn't Ty Cobb. <laughs> the way I look at it, baseball will eventually further our romance. How do you mean, Connie? Well, I figure if he spends enough time looking at curves and watching fellows trying to get to first base, it might give him an idea. <laughs> He's a backward sort, all right. Not about baseball. Tomorrow's the opening game, Mrs. Davis, with Clay City High, and already Mr. Boynton's invited me to go with him. Now, of course, my troubles just begin. I've got to have a nice sport outfit to wear to the game. What's wrong with the outfit you've got? Mr. Boynton's seen me wearing it three times already. Three times? Y yes, to the opening games of 1949, 48, and 47. <laughs> I made up my mind that this year, when they throw out the first ball, I'm throwing out that dress. <laughs> oh, if only I wasn't so broke. Let me think a minute. If there was somebody who could lend me... I'm broke too, Connie. <laughs> if there was somebody else who could... No, I guess borrowing isn't the answer. Wait a minute, Connie. I was talking to Mr. Fisher yesterday. He's the nice man who runs the pawn shop on 4th Street. I know. We've met. Several times. <laughs> well, I just happened to drop in yesterday to see that my brother Victor's cigarette case was polished. And Mr. Fisher showed me the nicest sport dress. Brand new. He had just picked it up at Sherry's department store at their spring sale. A sport dress? What did he want it for? Waiting on trade? <laughs> it's not for himself, Connie. It was for his daughter. But unfortunately, or maybe fortunately for you, it didn't fit her, and he couldn't take it back to Sherry's because all sales were final. So? So maybe he'd be willing to let you have it on a swap. But what could I swap him for it? Well, uh, no, I'll need these fillings as I get older. <laughs> I'd be glad to let you take the vacuum cleaner, Connie. Well, that's very generous of you, Mrs. Davis, but... Wouldn't it make it terribly inconvenient when you wanted to clean the rugs? Oh, not at all. I'm pawning the rugs next week. <laughs> but this summer coming and all, it's much cooler in the house without rugs. Besides, I need the money for other things. Now you just take the Hoover and stop off at Mr. Fisher's on your way to school. I certainly appreciate your kindness, Mrs. Davis, but I sort of hate the idea of having to get anything like this. At a pawn shop, I mean. I don't see why you should feel that way, Connie. It's just like any other business and a lot older than most. Take Christopher Columbus, for instance. Without a pawn shop, where would he be today? Same place. <laughs> You're right, Mrs. Davis, though. If, if Queen Isabella hadn't raised the money on her jewels, Columbus couldn't have discovered America. Exactly. Then where would you be? That's easy. I'd be teaching Indian kids for very little wampum. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Fisher. Well, Miss Brooks, I haven't seen you since you redeemed your locket. Correction. You haven't seen me since I pawned it again. After the holidays, remember? Oh, of course. It was on a Monday in January. I recall it because I took in six pairs of binoculars that day. The better to see my locket with, my dear. But what I'm here about this morning is a slight business deal. You see, Mrs. Davis suggested that you might be interested in this vacuum cleaner. Well, Mrs. Davis is an old friend, but frankly, we don't have too much of a call for vacuum cleaners. Oh, and... I don't want any money on it. I just want to swap. You'll find plenty of use for the vacuum cleaner, too, because Mrs. Davis is about to put her rugs in your protective custody for the summer. 
Again? <laughs> yeah, then I guess I could use the vacuum at that. Well, let's see now. What could I give you in return? Oh, here's something that might come in handy. It's for dressing and undressing, a genuine Chinese screen. Well, actually, we have very few Chinese getting dressed at our place. <laughs> in mind, Mr. Fisher, was this blue and gold sport dress over here. Those happen to be our school colors, and, well, I'm going to our opening baseball game tomorrow. I understand, my dear, and you're perfectly welcome to the dress. Oh, that's very nice of you, Mr. Fisher. Uh, just one thing, though, Miss Brooke. Are you sure the dress will fit you? Even if it doesn't, I'll look better in it than I would in the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Brooke. Hello, Harriet. How's the beloved daughter of Madison's beloved principal this morning? Fine, thanks. Are you going past Daddy's office? As fast as possible. <laughs> what can I do for you? Would you mind dropping this letter on his desk? It just arrived. All right, I'll take it in. Thanks. Oh, and I almost forgot. Would you take this loving cup? Just for delivering a letter? Oh. <laughs> this is the baseball trophy Madison won last year. Daddy asked me to pick it up after it was polished. I've got to run now. I want to catch Walter Denton before he invites anyone else to the opening game tomorrow. I know the feeling. See you later, Harriet. Come in. Good morning, Mr. Conklin. I've got something for you. That is a matter of opinion. <laughs> Oh, oh, the, the trophy. Oh, yes, well, put it on my desk, please. Yes, sir. There. Anything else? Oh, yes, sir. Harriet gave me a letter for you. Now, where in the world did I put it? Let me look in my bag. Oh, it must be in here somewhere. Oh, that's funny. I can't seem to find it. Uh, Miss Brooks, <laughs> each day the post office department handles hundreds of tons of mail. They carry it on trains and boats and planes over thousands of miles of varying terrain. <laughs> they go through rain and sleet and snow and dark of night. And you can't be trusted to walk ten yards with one loud one letter. <laughs> Please, sir, I, I may have dropped it in the hall. I'll go out and look for it in a minute. Meanwhile, I wish you'd cheer up a bit. Think of the ball game tomorrow and how we're going to whip Clay City High. You picked a perfect subject to elevate my spirits, Miss Brooks. For your information, there will be no game tomorrow. What? But you can't do that to Mrs. Davis's vacuum cleaner. <laughs> I mean, I purposely got a brand new used sport dress for this game. I've been looking forward to it for months. So have I, Miss Brooks. Nothing would please me more than to soundly drub Jason Brill's Clay City Tigers. But the sad fact remains that we can't play them. Why not? Because through some appalling mismanagement of the athletic fund, our team has no uniforms. Who's been handling the athletic fund? Uh, that is beside the point. <laughs> I guess I went a bit overboard on the basketball appropriation. Oh, this is awful, Mr. Conklin. Baseball is the most popular sport at Madison. How well I know it. That's why I've taken my glasses off, Miss Brooks. They steam up when I gaze at this statue near my desk. The bust of the man for whom we've named our athletic stadium. The one person responsible for inaugurating baseball at Madison. <laughs> our beloved founder, Yoda Critch. <laughs> you feel badly, sir. A lump but... comes into my throat when I think of how he would take this catastrophe. And when I hold this loving cup in my two hands... Uh, Mr. Conklin. Yes, Miss Brooks. Would you mind letting go of my ears? <laughs> oh. oh, I'm sorry. I better put my glasses back on. <laughs> Look, Mr. Conklin, isn't there something we could do to make the game possible? I'm afraid not, Miss Brooks, unless we... Oh, wait a minute. Do you think our boys could play good ball without uniforms? I don't know how good they'd play, but they'd certainly draw a nice crowd. <laughs> our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. 
No other dentifrice offers proof of such results. Proof that Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Two years' research at leading universities using Colgate Dental Cream, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice history on tooth decay. Conclusive proof that when teeth are brushed with Colgate's right after eating, Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Yes, the toothpaste you use to clean your breath while you clean your teeth now offers a safe, proved way to reduce tooth decay. Modern science shows decay is caused by mouth acids which are at their worst right after eating. Brushing teeth with Colgate's as directed helps remove acids before they harm enamel. Colgate Dental Cream has been proved to contain all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. Get Colgate Dental Cream today. Big economy size, only 59 cents. Always use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay before it starts. Remember, no other dentifrice offers proof of such results. Well, Mr. Conklin refused to let our team play without the proper equipment, especially against Madison's traditional rival, Clay City High. I was pretty blue about the whole thing, so when lunch period arrived, I headed for Mr. Boynton's biology laboratory, my customary destination when I feel confused or unhappy or contented or cheerful or anything. (laughs) (laughs) Hello, Mr. Boynton. I... Mr. Boynton? Oh, I'm over behind these cages, just doing a little repair work. Have you heard about the game being called off tomorrow? Yes, I'm just sick about it. I had my heart set on going to that game tomorrow. So did I. But don't be too depressed. We can still do something else together. Together? Oh, oh, that's right. You were going along to the game with me, weren't you? Obviously, I was indispensable to you. (laughs) But I know what might be fun. We could go to the movies right after school. By four o'clock, we could be sitting in the balcony at the State Theater. Oh, but the State doesn't open until 6.30. That's what I say. It might be fun. Uh, I I don't understand. How could we have fun sitting in a movie for two and a half hours if there's nothing on the screen? (laughs) Mr. Boynton, please do me a favor. The next time we're in the balcony, borrow the usher's flashlight and see how your fellow Americans are living. Uh, I guess I may seem pretty naive on occasion, Miss Brooks. Oh, I don't know. Sometimes you're quite a man of the world. Another world, of course. (laughs) Now, suppose we go to lunch. I've got to finish early and drop into the domestic science room. Miss Westville promised to check my new sport dress and see what alterations it needs. Oh, is that what you've got in that box, a dress? Yes. Now, come on, Mr. Boynton, let's go. Well, I'll have to join you a bit later on, Miss Brooks. I've got to finish repairing the locks on these rabbit cages. They're brand new, too. I can't understand how these iron locks were broken. Must have some pretty tough rabbits in there. <laughs> now, look at them, will you? Aren't they cute? I keep the female rabbits in one cage and the males in another. You would. <laughs> and get your work done as soon as possible, huh? I will, Miss Brooks. I'd go with you right now, but it's rather important. You know how rabbit cages are. Of course. You wouldn't want to come back from lunch and find six cages where there were two before. <laughs> Let's see now. Where can I sit? Oh, there's Walter Denton. Mind if I join you, Walter? Not at all. Welcome aboard, almost appetizing morsel of Madison's faculty. Thank you, Walter. Oh, it's a pleasure, I'm sure. Your apple-cheeked, cherry-lipped countenance is like meat and drink to my beauty-starved senses. Thanks again. Now get your teeth out of my arm and back into your sandwich. <laughs> I'm afraid the ebullience of my greeting to you is not a true barometer of my feelings, Miss Brooks. No, no, we're formally cavorted the blithest of blithe spirits. There now sits a sodden lump of gloom, a veritable clod of a boy. 
Walter Denton, boy Claude. <laughs> but if I may be permitted an observation in your native tongue, what, pray, is the cause of this unseeming cloddery? Oh, it's Harriet Conklin. We had an argument, and now she's not talking to me. Oh? What was the argument about? Well, it started when I heard that Mr. Conklin was calling off tomorrow's ball game. And I said, I couldn't understand how our athletic fund got into such bad shape that we couldn't afford uniforms for the team. Then? Well, then I mentioned Mr. Conklin's administration of the funds in a way that Harriet construed as derogatory. What did you say? I said he was a marble-headed dimwit. <laughs> I guess that could be construed as derogatory. <laughs> Look, I know how you feel, Walter. I'm disappointed, too. But after all... My feelings transcend disappointment, Miss Brooks. They can only be described as abjectly abysmal, cataclysmically morbid, and horrendously depressive. What did you have for lunch today? A thesaurus <laughs> burger? <clears throat> Look, Walter, maybe all hope isn't lost. Oh, pardon me, Miss Brooks, but Mr. Conklin wants to talk to us about the ball game tomorrow. Yes, Miss Brooks, all hope is not lost. Now, you see, Walter, I told you... I knew it! I just knew if there was any possible chance to salvage that contest, Mr. Conklin would be the man to do it. Yes, sir. It isn't every school that can boast of a principal who, even when he's made a few prior mistakes with the athletic fund, can bounce right oh, back Oh, and... quiet! <laughs> May we sit down with you for a moment, Miss Brooks? Certainly, sir. What's this about the game tomorrow? Do you really think we can hold it? That, my dear, depends upon the cooperation we get. Suffice it to say, I've contacted a sporting goods store in town who offered to rent us all the necessary uniforms and equipment for a paltry $25. Isn't that wonderful? Great. Have you got the paltry $25, Mr. Conklin? Uh, no, no, I haven't. <laughs> my salary check doesn't come through until next week. However, that is not going to stop me. I feel now that I'm duty-bound to field a team against Clay City. Duty-bound? Yes, Miss Brooks. Only minutes ago, as I sat fondling our loving cup, symbol of Madison's baseball championship of bygone seasons, I looked up at the statue of our founder, Yoda Critch. And suddenly, <laughs> I seemed to hear his voice say, with a tear in it, I started baseball at Madison Osgood. Keep it going, boy. <laughs> and then... Then I heard myself saying, but Yoda, where can I get $25 for uniforms? And fantastic as it may sound, Yoda said, go, Osgood, go and get the money from Miss Brooks. <laughs> Are you following me, Miss Brooks? You lost me when Yoda said, go, Osgood. <laughs> It's such a worthy cause, Miss Brooks. If I had the money, I'd hand it over in a minute. So would I if you had the money. <laughs> or if I had it, for that matter. But my check doesn't come through until next week either. But surely you must have a little something salted away? Just salt, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> Gosh, Miss Mr. Conklin, I wish I could be helpful, but I just can't. You rarely are. <laughs> I'd have laid out my last $40 for those rabbit cages. I won't get it back from the board for over a month. And I just bought this sport dress with my last vacuum cleaner. <laughs> that is, I got it at a very expensive place, and I feel as if I've been run through a if vacuum cleaner. If we could cleaner. only borrow the money somewhere for just a few days, I'm sure... Wait a minute, re... Mr. Conklin. Did you say borrow? Why, yes. For just a few days? That's right. Sir, you've given me an idea. Yes, I'm almost positive it'll work. Now, just sit still, everyone. I've got a couple of stops to make. Gee, Miss Brooks, you look like you're on your way to a ball. You're close, Walter. I'm on my way to three of them. <laughs> well, here I am again, Mr. Fisher. I'm at the rear counter, Miss Brooks. Just step this way, please. Certainly. I know you're a busy man, Mr. Fisher, so I'll be brief. What will you give me for this bust of Yodar Critch? Well, now, I don't like to seem callous, Miss Brooks, but you'd be surprised how few calls I get for busts of Yodar Critch these days. <laughs> yes, but I just want the money for a short time. Money? You want money for this? Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Brooks. That would be out of the question. 
However, I've still got that large Chinese screen here. You could have that in exchange. Oh, excuse me. I think another customer's coming in. I'll get back to you in a minute. Another customer? If you don't mind, Mr. Fisher, I'd rather not be seen in here with this statue. I'll just duck behind the screen until he goes. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? I'd like to borrow some money on what I have in this box. And what might that be? It's a blue and gold sport dress. <laughs> you want to pawn a sport dress? Well, yes, sir. It belongs to uh, 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 my wife. You know, the little woman. <laughs> oh, the little woman. Yeah, well, I don't usually take in dresses. Uh, unless they're in the family, that is. But... Uh... Uh, do you mind if we discuss this in a moment? Another customer is coming in. Oh, another customer? But I mustn't be seen in here with this dress. I'd better hide behind the screen until he's gone. <laughs> uh, don't rush yourself. It'll take him a few minutes to open the door. Generally, they peer into the window outside for quite a while before sidling in. <laughs> uh, I don't want to take any chances. I'll see you later. Oh, pardon me. I didn't know anyone else was hiding behind... Miss Brooks! <laughs> don't stand there, hubby. Be kissed the little woman. <laughs> This is most embarrassing, Miss Brooks. I, uh, what are you doing with that statue of Yodar Critch? Well, I... Never mind that, Mr. Boynton. What are you doing with my dress? Well, I... Uh, never mind that, Miss Brooks. What are you doing with that statue? <laughs> Quiet, Mr. Boynton. Another customer just came in. Hey, good afternoon, my boy. Can I help you? Yes, sir. I'd like to hawk these rabbit cages. <laughs> rabbit cages? Yeah, just for a short period, and then we'll take it off your hands, rabbits and all. This is an interesting day. <laughs> and business is booming, too. I see another customer is about to enter. Another customer? Oh, I don't want anybody to see me in here. I gotta hide somewhere. Shh. Room for one more down front. <laughs> oh, thanks, Miss Brooks. I'll just. Miss Brooks! Get behind the screen, Walter. Oh, you won't tell Mr. Boynton about these cages, will you? I'm sure she won't, Walter. <sighs> Good. I wouldn't want you to find out that I... <laughs> Mr. Walter, what are you doing with my rabbit cages? Well, I... Miss Brooks, what are you doing with that statue of Yodar Critch? Never mind that, Walter. What are you doing with Mr. Boynton's rabbit cages? Never mind my rabbit cages, Miss Brooks. What are you doing with that statue? What are you doing with my dress, Mr. Boynton? <laughs> Walter, what are you doing with my rabbit cages? <laughs> well, that was fun. Shall we go around again? <laughs> You're out some way or Quiet, we... Walter. Another customer just came in. Uh, I can see through a crack in this screen. He's coming all the way back to the last counter. And what may I do for you, sir? I, sir, should like to negotiate a loan on this silver loving cup. <laughs> you mean you want to hock it? Don't be vulgar. Twenty-five dollars would relieve my temporary financial embarrassment, and the cup would be redeemed in a very short time. Uh, well, uh... oh, good heavens, somebody's coming in. I can't be seen in this sort of an establishment. I'll just hide behind this screen until he leaves. Oop. Oh, I'm sorry, boy. Oh, that's okay, Mr. Conklin. I'll move over. Thank you, Walter. Now, Miss Brooks, if you'll move over a bit so that I can stand between Mr. Boynton and yourself, I'm sure we'll all be... Miss Brooks! <laughs> Mr. Boynton! Walter Denton! If this is roll call, you've left out Yodar Critch. <laughs> So I have. <laughs> Miss Brooks, what are you doing with that statue of Yoda Critch? Well, I... Walter, what are you doing with Mr. Boynton's rabbit cage? Well, I... Mr. Boynton, what are you doing with Miss Brooks' dress? Yes, Mr. Boynton, what are you doing with my dress? Quiet, quiet! That sort of buck passing will never take my mind off that statue, Miss Brooks. It won't? Well, try this on for size, Mr. Conklin. What are you doing in this pawn shop with the Madison baseball trophy? Ooh... <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> now, let's face it, folks. We're all here for the same purpose, to raise the money for the baseball uniform. Sure. Now, if Mr. Fisher will come through, we'll always... Well, my last customer just left. My, isn't it getting a little stuffy for you folks behind that screen? <laughs> Stuffier than ever lately. 
Mr. Fisher, this is a very strange situation, but we're all here after the same $25. Now, you've seen our collateral. Take any or all of it and please give us the money. Of course, my dear, of course. I'll give you $25 on this loving cup alone. Wonderful, Mr. Fisher. Now I won't have to cancel the game tomorrow. And, folks, our mutual mortification has not been in vain. Oh, uh, pardon me, sir. There seems to be a letter in this loving cup. A letter? Oh, that must be the one Harriet gave me for you this morning. It probably dropped in the cup while I was holding them both. Uh, no doubt, Miss Brooks. Oh, I left my glasses at the office. Will you read the letter to me, please? Yes, sir. Why, it's from Jason Brill. It says, Dear Mr. Conklin... Due to a shortage in our athletic fund, I am forced to cancel tomorrow's baseball game because my team has no uniform. <laughs> Eve Arden as our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a Luster Cream shampoo. Luster Cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dumit's magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap, better than a liquid, Luster Cream is a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight? Yes, tonight, try Luster Cream shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful Luster Cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a Luster Cream Shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, we were all very disappointed by the postponement of the opening baseball game with Clay City. But my chagrin was short-lived because that night I had a date with Mr. Boynton. And soon I heard him saying... Come a little closer, Miss Brooks. All right. How's this? Closer. Like this? A little closer. Please, Mr. Boynton, if we get any closer to that movie screen, we'll be in the picture. <laughs> Next week, turn into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, directed by Al Lewis with the music of Wilbur Hatch under the direction of Maurice Carlton. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, and Frank Nelson. Doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Yes, 36 leading skin specialists proved in tests on 1,285 different women that palm olive soap facials using nothing but palm olive brought new complexion beauty to two women out of three. Just wash your face three times daily with palm olive soap, each time for 60 seconds, massaging palm olive's beauty lather onto your skin. Then rinse. So start your palm olive facials today. Remember, doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. <laughs> For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.